Hey guys, TrueGreen7 here, and a while back I made a video about rejected Pokemon, and now I'm going to show you guys the top 10 Pokemon features that were rejected. This list consists of features that were planned but never put into the game like the ability to have more than 4 moves, features that are hidden within the code like the Godstone in Generation 5, and features that were originally intended for earlier generations but were delayed. So what features will be revealed today? Maybe Game Freak planned to allow Pokemon to speak human languages or the ability to join the villainous team. I don't know, I'm just a guy with a mic. It's a nice mic though, it costs good money. Now let's begin with... Number 10 A Trainer Battle with Professor Oak In the Generation 1 games, unused trainer data along with a strong team for good old Samuel Oak is located in the code. This totally implies that the player was supposed to battle him at some point in the game. And by some point, I mean at the very end cause damn are those Pokemon high leveled. He's got Tauros, Executor, Arcanine, Gyarados, and the final evolution of your starter. Perform a few glitches and you'll see that the fact that his team is almost identical to your rival's final team may support the theory that Professor Oak was originally going to be the champion. After all, there's an email on his PC from the Pokemon League, which issues a challenge to all trainers and requests Oak to come visit them. This is some crazy stuff considering he's able to enter the Hall of Fame with you, which only champions are allowed to do, and the fact that at one point he was the champion in the Pokemon manga. Number 9 Buying Pokemon Hey, so you know how some people accuse Pokemon of promoting animal abuse and slavery? <laughs> well, it's a good thing this wasn't really implemented in Pokemon Red and Green, because when Pokemon was just a concept called Capsule Monsters, some art reveals that Capsule Monsters were able to be bought and sold at Pokemarts, or Capumarts. This is indicated by the caption in which a trainer says, Hey mister, I'll take this one please. To which the vendor answers, Lapras. I don't know if you're tough enough to handle it yet, kid. This may also be the creation of the mechanic in which a trainer needs certain badges to train high-level Pokemon. Of course, in the final game, the only enforced way to buy a Pokemon was by exchanging them for tokens at the Celadon Game Corner. And of course, that Game Corner was run by Team Rocket, so it's not like Game Freak was condoning their actions. Oh yeah, and this dude sells you a Magikarp. He's alright. Number 8 Sweet Honey in Gold and Silver we know that in Gen 4, honey was introduced as a way to attract rare Pokemon by slathering it on trees. But did you know that unused text in Generation 2 refers to an item called Sweet Honey, which seems to attract Pokemon the same way it does in Generation 4? The concept may have been abandoned for the use of headbutt trees and the move Sweet Scent, and was brought back considering Sinnoh and Johto are forever linked by a bond so strong that not even Kanto can come between them. It's beautiful, man. Number 7 Discount sales and closed days in Hoenn Pokemarts. So we all know what a Pokemart is. I don't have to explain, right? Good. I'm proud of you guys. Well, it seems that there is some unused text in Ruby and Sapphire which indicates that discount sales and closed days could have been implemented. Keep in mind that in the final version, Lily Cove Department Store does have rooftop sales, but there is no feature in which Pokemarts or the department store are closed. I mean, it's not like I really want this to happen, it's just uh, interesting. Number 6. Wild Double Battles in Gen 3 The feature of Wild Double Battles is prevalent in Unova, but they were actually planned to debut in the generation that introduced Double Battles in general. In Gen 3, this mode is incomplete, and can be enabled by accessing the code and setting the battle mode flag to 0 times 0001. Simple enough. I've always dreamt of knocking out two zigzagoons out in the wild. I'm kidding. I've only ever dreamt of opening a pastry shop in the French countryside. Now that's a satisfying dream. Number 5 Pseudo Gym Leader Battles in Gen 3 By now you may understand that Game Freak actually thought of a lot of ways to mix up the Pokemon formula in Gen 3. One thing that definitely did not make the cut was Pseudo Gym Leader Battles. Unused text for a test battle with a Pseudo Gym Leader can be found hidden in the game, but this may just have been for development or a demo. I personally believe that it would have been really cool to have many boss battles in a gym before getting to the real boss battle. Number 4 Travel Trunk I don't have to tell you that in X and Y, trainer customization was introduced, but the only place you could change clothes was in the Pokemon Center or Boutique. But the Travel Trunk is an unused item created to hold all your apparel and give you the ability to change clothes anywhere. I think this was left unused because having a trainer change their clothes out in the open doesn't really fit in the Pokemon world, not with all the hikers and backpackers watching. Number 3 Rebattling Trainers in Generation 1 
Tunekazu Ishihara revealed to Shoko Nakagawa that originally the game was programmed to trigger a battle with a trainer any time the player walked in their line of sight, even if you already defeated them in battle. I wonder what would happen if you just defeated them a second ago. Would their Pokemon be magically revived every time? The world will never know. Number 2 Skateboard once Pokemon became extremely popular and Game Freak was already developing a sequel to Generation 1, they started promoting what would become Gold and Silver in many magazines. They would often reveal new Pokemon and features, but sometimes these features never made it into the final game, like the skateboard, which was revealed as an alternative to the bicycle and could allow players to travel to unusual places. In a world inhabited by super-powered monsters, I don't think the word unusual can be used casually. And number one is... Battle against Arceus Over the past 7 years, we've had multiple opportunities to acquire this mythical Pokemon from various events, but legitimately encountering him at the Hall of Origins using the Azure Flute has never been officially implemented by Game Freak. In 2013, Junichi Masuda revealed that he thought the mechanics of the flute were too confusing, leading to his decision to never distribute it. So the only way to battle the god of Pokemon is to go against the rules set by the deity himself. Which means you have to cheat. But you don't have to cheat in order to like this video if you enjoyed, and subscribe if you haven't. All you have to do is press a button. Make sure to check out the top video for my top 10 list of rejected Pokemon, because they didn't just reject features, and press the bottom video for more fact videos. And please follow me on Facebook and Twitter so I can see you guys before my next video comes out, which will be very soon. Bye guys!